Welcome back to the channel, guys. I put a vote up on my Discord. You guys may or may not have seen it, but I decided that on this video, you guys get to decide what was coming next. I said, all right, guys, you vote. Do you either want to see the fire spec deep dive today, going in point for point, why I'm choosing the talents, how I'm going to use the fire spec, why I'm choosing the fire spec, or do you guys want to see shadow resist tanking setups today? And guess what one? Shadow resist tanking setups. So that is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be going over several different shadow resist tanking setups, really, really safe, high shadow resist tanking setups, threat heavy shadow resist tanking setups, and also we're gonna be going over some of that awesome shadow resist tanking gear that we get once we've progressed into AQ40. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking out my video. Please remember to go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the shadow resist tanking setups that I'm including today. Also, let me know if you guys like the video and please hit the like and subscribe button. It really, really helps me out, guys. I don't normally ask for you guys to do this on my YouTube videos. You know, I don't normally do the YouTube chill, you know, but it really does help me out, guys. I am trying to grow my channel and I do appreciate it. Anyways, let's get into the video. Guys, the first set we're going to look at is a set that's a little bit more threat intensive. And what exactly does that mean? This means that this set is going to sacrifice some possible shadow resistance that we could have gotten, giving us a little bit less shadow resistance, and instead trading that survivability for more threat generation. And the more threat that you generate, the harder your DPS can go on the boss, which means the boss will just die faster. So, in this fight, my preferred style of play is to go with the setup that has the least amount of shadow resist that you can possibly get away with while still being safe enough to survive. However, for those of you who are going to be progressing through AQ and going into AQ for the first time, you're going to want to be safe and wear a, you're going to want to wear a set that has a lot of shadow resistance just to be safe and having your spellcaster DPS hold back on threat a little bit just to make sure that you guys get the fight down. But this first setup we're going to look at is going to be that more threat heavy setup. And the first item we're going to look at is the tier 2 helmet Nemesis Skull Cap. And this is a helmet that you should have gotten a long long time ago from Anixia. This helmet, not only does it add a lot of stamina, some intellect, and 32 spell power, but as you can see, it adds 10 shadow resistance, which is exactly what we're looking for. Something that adds a lot of stamina, resistance, and damage to pump that threat. Next, we're going to be looking at Eidolon Talisman. And this is a BOE necklace that you can buy off the auction house right now. It doesn't actually add any spell power, so it's not going to generate more threat for us but it is going to be a safety item. There is one other necklace that you can use though that is going to be better than this necklace, and that's going to be the Amulet of Shadow Warding from the Scepter Quest. However, even though the Amulet of Shadow Warding is better than Eidolon Talisman, it takes a lot of time to complete the quest chain and isn't completely mandatory. So if you want to min-max your Shadow Resistance tanking set, you can definitely go for it. But it's not necessary, so don't feel the need to have to do it just to be able to get the boss down. Next is going to be the Fell Heart Shoulder Pads. And this is one that you can possibly swap out in the future for something that's a little bit more threat heavy. And I say that because yes, this has intellect. Yes, this has stamina. That is stats that we want. But it only has seven shadow resistance, which is a little bit on the lower side. And of course, only has nine spell power, which again is a bit lower than what we'd be aiming for. If you compare these to the tier 2.5 shoulders, which you're not going to have on your first clear, obviously, or compare these to Mantle of Blackwing Cabal from Blackwing Lair, both of these shoulders are going to have better threat generation because they have stamina, have intellect, but have more spell power. The only bad part is, the only drawback, is that you're missing that 7 shadow resistance. So it is possible that if the twins end up not doing that much damage, 
you could sacrifice tier one shoulders and instead wear something like Mantle of the Black Queen Cabal or even better tier 2.5 shoulders, Doom Collar shoulders. Now let's look at the cloak and there's multiple different cloaks that you could wear in this slot such as Juno Shadow and some other cloaks that have extra shadow resistance on them. However, I prefer to go with Chromatic Cloak, and let me tell you why. Not only is Chromatic Cloak BOE, so you can just buy it or get it crafted rather than farming a boss over and over for it, but it adds both threat generation and resistance stats, giving 9 shadow resistance, 10 stamina, which is a little bit less shadow resistance compared to something like Juno's Shadow or something like Cloak of the Pale Moon but it adds 1% critical strike rating, which is exactly what we want for generating threat since we're going to be spamming Searing Pain most of the time when tanking the Twin Emperors. And Searing Pain is excellent with critical strike rating. Next we move down to the Nemesis robes, and the Nemesis robes are most definitely not best in slot for Shadow Resistance. You can get better gear in AQ40, however, we're going to be including gear in the setup that is not from AQ40. We're just going to be talking about the gear that you can get prior to AQ40 and moving into AQ40 in your first couple raids. So in your first couple raids, not including any AQ gear, I would recommend Nemesis Robes because not only do they have a lot of stamina on them, but you're gaining both spell power and critical strike rating, which is very, very good for threat generation. However, looking into the future, you will want to pick up the trash robes that drop in AQ40 that drops, that give spell power, 2% hit rating, and shadow resistance. That is going to be the robe that you're going to want to wear in the future. But moving into AQ40 for the first time, Nemesis robes are going to be one of your best options. And if you don't quite have Nemesis robes yet, Robe of Volatile Power is an acceptable substitute. Moving down to the bracers, I'd like to say that yes, Rock Fury bracers are better. However, once again, we're going with gear that we're going to be able to have going into AQ40. And not everyone is going to be able to have Rock Fury bracers immediately. So we're going to be going with bracers of arcane accuracy, which again do not have shadow resistance but they have spell power, hit rating, stamina, and intellect, which is fantastic for threat generation. There are bracers that do have shadow resistance that you can wear if you absolutely need to, but we'll be going over those bracers in the alternative setup that we'll do after this one. Next, looking at the gloves, we have the tier two gloves, which again have perfect stats for what we want to do here. Stamina, Intellect, 10 Shadow Resistance, which is the standard amount of resistance that you want on an item, 10 or more, to make it an acceptably good item. And they also have Spell Power and Critical Strike Rating. And on top of that, you're adding towards your three-piece bonus as well. So if you end up replacing your robe with Robe of Volatile Power, or you get the Trash Robe in AQ40, you can easily just replace that robe and still keep your three-set bonus for that little bit extra boost of power. Finishing off our Tier 2 pieces, we finally have the Nemesis Belt which again is one of those items that just has the exact stats that you want. 18 stamina, on a, 18 stamina on a belt is a great amount of stamina on a belt, and it has intellect and shadow resistance to boot, and on top of that spell power and critical strike rating, making our searing pain generate plenty of threat while also keeping us alive and mitigating that shadow damage that we're going to be taking. Going back to some of the tier one items again, we have the tier one legs here, which add 20 stamina, 19 intellect, and 10 shadow resistance. This item is one of those items that technically doesn't have incredible stats. It doesn't have hit rating. It doesn't have crit rating. But regardless of not having hit or crit rating, it still has plenty of spell power, 10 shadow resistance, and 20 stamina, is and is going to be a great piece moving into the dungeon and being new to AQ40 and while not having any AQ40 gear quite yet. The last tier 1 item that we're going to be using is actually the tier 1 boots. And these boots have 23 stamina on them, which is absolutely huge for a boot slot item. 
And on top of that, of course, we have the Intellect, 11 Intellect, 7 Shadow Resistance, and a little bit of Spell Power, only giving us 18 Spell Power. And you will notice that we activate the 3 set bonus of Tier 1, and you might be asking me down in the comment section, Alive, is this intentional? Do we actually use Drain Mana or Drain Life? And the answer is no, you shouldn't have to drain life ever. You want to be spamming Searing Pain to generate as much threat as possible. It just so happens that we end up getting the 3 set bonus here. But we could potentially break the 3 set bonus going into AQ40 and obtaining AQ40 items such as replacing the shoulders and so on and so on. Looking at the rings, we actually have Band of Force Concentration and a Paradox Circle of Shadow Resistance. Now, you could very, very easily just go with two rings of Shadow Resistance here if the boss hits hard enough. But if the boss doesn't hit that hard and Blizzard actually made these bosses quite easy, then you're going to want to lean towards something that's a little bit more threat sensitive, like Band of Force Concentration, or once you've progressed through AQ a bit and gotten your hands on some other items, you could very, very easily use the AQ-20 ring, the Ring of Unspoken Secrets, or you could use the Cthune ring. Both of those rings would be acceptable as well. Now, moving down to the trinket slot here, I'm going to address a question that a lot of people have asked me, and that is, Alive, do you need to have a tier to tank Twin Emperors? Do you have to have the tier? Is it is it mandatory to have a Neltharian's tier to tank the Twin Emperors? And the answer is no. You don't absolutely need the tier to tank Twin Emperors. But is it better? Is it good to have the tier? Of course it is. Of course, the tier is just an amazing add-on. 2% hit rating is going to be fantastic, adding a ton of threat to your threat per second while spamming Searing Pain, and of course that spell power is going to be great as well. The only thing is, if you don't have tier, you're going to generate a little bit less threat, but you're going to be tankier. You're going to want to use two Ultra Flash Shadow Reflectors. However, if you do have tier, you use the tier in only one Ultra Flash Shadow Reflector and end up choosing to get more Shadow Resistance in a different slot. For example, you could go Neltharian's tier, one Shadow Reflector, and since you have tier, you could go double Ring of Shadow Resistance, or something along those lines. Serpentine Skulker is going to be the wand of choice here, and the wand is always going to be a great slot to gain resistance stats in, just because, generally speaking, at least up until Naxxramas, the wand slot has some of the lowest stats given to your character compared to all of the other item slots. So in all of the other item slots, gaining 10 shadow resistance is quite significant. But all of those other item slots give a ton of stats potentially with other items. However, in the wand slot, our only other alternative is the ZG wand that adds 18 spell power, or the Bug Trio Wand that you'll eventually get that adds 19 spell power. But having the Serpentine Skulker is going to be one of the better item slots towards gaining your Shadow Resistance, while also retaining as much threat per second as possible. The last two items that we're going to look at here are the Main Hand and Off Hand. And there are offhands that you could use that add shadow resistance. However, I prefer to always go with Jindo's Bag of Whammies, or if you get a better offhand moving forward, that is also acceptable. But I like to go for a threat main hand and offhand, just because, generally speaking, if you go for a shadow resistance offhand, you're missing out on such crucial stats that you could have easily made up for in other areas. And also, Usually, at least on private servers from what we've seen, you don't really need to get so much shadow resistance that you're forced to swap away your offhand for something more tanky. Also, one more thing to note on the main hand here, you might ask, Alive, why don't you use Claw of Chromagus instead of Mageblade? Isn't Claw of Chromagus better DPS? And yes, while Claw of Chromagus is better single target simulated DPS, we actually don't want it here because Searing Pain does not scale nearly as well with spell power as Shadow Bolt does. Instead, it has half the coefficient, 
which means we want to lean a little bit away from spell power and lean a little bit more heavily into hit and critical strike rating, if possible. Looking down at the resistances here, you'll notice that we have 129 shadow resistance. And that is just off the items that we have here. That does not include enchants, such as t plus 10 shadow resistance that you could get to the chromatic cloak. And it also does not include any buffs that you could potentially get, such as Gift of Arthas giving you shadow resistance, Mark of the Wild giving you shadow resistance, or even a Paladin Aura giving you more shadow resistance. So this setup is the setup that uses a little bit lower shadow resistance. So as you can see, this is the setup that's going with slightly less shadow resistance than you could potentially get, but we generate quite a substantial amount of threat, which is going to be very, very important, especially for all those mages out there trying to carry a large ignite to burn the boss down as fast as possible. Alright, now this is going to be the setup that will give you the most amount of shadow resistance going into AQ-40 without any AQ-40 gear. And I don't particularly recommend this specific setup, because as you guys will see, you're basically giving up all of your threat generation just for shadow resistance to be as tanky as possible, which means that your DPS, the mages and warlocks that are not tanking the Twin Emperor, are hardly going to be able to do much damage at all, because they'll easily rip aggro off of you. So we're going to go over all of these different items and tell you what stats they give you. However, remember that this is all about trade-offs. This is all about how much shadow resistance you can gain, while also gaining threat generation. You want to have enough shadow resistance to survive, but not go too much into shadow resistance to the point where you're a big sponge and do no damage at all. Once again, the first item we're going to use is the Nemesis Skull Cap, only giving us 10 shadow resistance. But moving on to the items that are changing here, we can see that one of them is Juno's Shadow. Previous to Juno's Shadow, we were using Chromatic Cloak, which gave 9 Shadow Resistance, but added 1 Critical Strike Rating. Juno Shadow gives us 6 extra Shadow Resistance, however is not going to give us any Critical Strike Rating. So in this particular slot, you're trading plus 6 Shadow Resistance for minus 1 Critical Strike Rating. The chest here is adding plus 20 Shadow Resistance, which is a lot of Shadow Resistance for one item slot. However, if you guys will notice, this doesn't have any stamina, or intellect, or spell power, or crit. So, comparing this to the tier 2 robes, you're dropping 32 spell power, 1 crit, and a ton of stamina and intellect. So, technically, yes, this robe will give you the most shadow resistance. But like I said before, this robe is essentially just gonna make you a sponge. You're gonna absorb a ton of damage but you're gonna be essentially useless. Next is Funeral Cuffs, and if you remember, we were previously using Bracers of Arcane Accuracy, giving us 21 spell power and 1% hit with stamina and intellect on it, so we're giving up some stamina and 21 spell power and hit rating for 10 shadow resistance. So while this is the best in slot item for adding shadow resistance, you can see here that clearly this trade-off is not a very good trade-off since you're giving up such a massive amount of stats for 10 Shadow Resistance. This is one of the items that you're going to prefer to not want to wear. You only wear this item if you absolutely have to because your healers are having a hard time keeping you up. The next item that's changed here are the Ruined Stygian items, which are craftable items that you can currently get right now in the game. And the first of these items is going to be the Ruined Stygian Belt. This gives you stamina, 20 shadow resistance, and a little bit of MP5, but no spell power and crit. And if you compare this to the belt that we previously had here, the Tier 2 Belt, which adds 25 spell power and 1 crit, this is only giving you 10 more shadow resistance than our Tier 2 Belt. 
but you're losing that spell power, losing crit, and losing the intellect that the tier 2 belt would have given you. Next is the runed Stygian legs, and these add 25 shadow resistance, and 25 shadow resistance is actually a huge amount for one single item slot to give you. So it is possible that you do want to wear these over the tier 1 pants. The tier 1 pants of course give you 30 spell power, which is great, but only give you 10 shadow resistance. Gain Gaining an additional 15 shadow resistance is significant, so if you find that you do need to lean a bit heavier into shadow resistance for your specific raid to get it down successfully, the rune stitch and leggings are one of the items that I would be looking to swap into because this is a pretty good trade. Yes, you're losing 30 spell power, but you're not losing hit, you're not losing crit other than from the intellect, and gaining 15 shadow resistance. And 15 shadow resistance, in addition, is better than what most of the other item slots give you as a baseline. So the rune stitch and legs are a very, very good item if you need to lean more heavy into shadow resistance. But of course, as of the recording of this video, AQ40 is not out yet, so we can only speculate. We don't quite know exactly how hard the boss is going to hit quite yet. Looking at the last rune stygian item here, we have the rune stygian boots. And this is another item that you could pot that you could potentially want to lean into. Comparing these to the tier 1 boots, the tier 1 boots already don't have that much spell power on them. They do have a lot of stamina, so you are going to be losing quite a bit of stamina, but you're gaining 10 shadow resistance. So while the tier 1 boots definitely aren't a bad option, if you are forced to lean more heavily into shadow resistance because, let's say, the boss hits harder than people expect the boss to hit, this could also this could also be an item that you want to lean into in addition to the rune stitch and legs. But I would go with the rune stitch and legs before I would equip these boots. I'd equip these boots as a second resort. Looking at the rings, we ended up just going with another green shadow resistance ring like we had talked about before. If the boss is hitting harder than we expected, then rings are also one of the better slots that we can swap into. Because yes, you're losing quite a bit of spell power and extra threat generation stats, but 21 shadow resistance is quite significant. I would prefer to go with rune stygian leggings over tier 1 pants before swapping away one of my good rings. However, again, these rings are not a terrible option to lean into if you absolutely have to. Because the other rings out there, such as Band of Force Concentration, adds zero shadow resistance. So you're basically trading 21 shadow resistance for spell power and hit. Which isn't too bad of a trade if you have to do it. Next is going to be the Ultra Flash Shadow Reflector, adding a second one here. And while 20 shadow resistance on one item slot is very, very good, as we all know, Neltharion's Tear is just such an incredible item that you really, really don't want to trade it away for anything if you can help it. So yes, you can go to Ultra Flash Shadow Protectors, particularly if you don't already have a Neltharion's Tear, then it makes a bit more sense. But if you do have a Neltharion's Tear, I would really try not to ever swap that away because you're losing way too much potential threat generation. The last item that's going to change in this setup is the offhand that we were talking about earlier. Previously, we used Jindo's Bag of Whammies, which adds both spell power, hit rating, stamina, and intellect. This offhand doesn't have stamina, or intellect, or spell power, or hit rating, but it adds 10 shadow resistance. So again, this is one of those items where the trade-off is just not quite there. It's not quite worth it. The other options that we could potentially trade off, such as the pants, the boots, or the ring, are going to be better options to trade off for more shadow resistance before the offhand is going to ever be considered. And as you can see, in this setup, we have 254 shadow resistance, and that is before Gift of Arthas, that is before any Paladin Auras, Undead Racials, 
anything of that nature. And on top of that, the 20 resistance that we get from, from Mark of the Wild Druid buff as well. So this is an extreme amount of shadow resistance. But I wanted to show you guys this setup just so you can see how the trade-offs could potentially work going into AQ40 and show you stacking as much shadow resistance as possible is not always going to be what's best for your raid. Finding that sweet middle ground where your healers feel comfortable and you also can deal as much threat as possible is what you're going to be wanting to aim for. But again, for the very, very first run, I would lean a little bit more heavily into Shadow Resistance, using potentially the Rune Stygian's leggings, using the boots, using double ring of Shadow Resistance, not using something like Polychromatic Vision Wrap, not using something like Funeral Cuffs or Skull of Burning Shadows. All right, guys, that's that. See ya. What's that? You want to know that BIS setup? That dank dank setup after you get all the AQ40 gear? All right, I hear you. I hear you. I got you. Let's do it. Let's do it then. All right, so right off the bat, let's just say that this setup is only using 145 shadow resistance. Now, that may seem really, really low, but if you add in Gift of Arthas, Mark of the Wild, and Shadow Resistance Aura, that's going to add an additional 90 shadow resistance, bringing you up to 235. And then if you're Horde and you're an undead warlock on top of that, you get 10 more shadow resistance, making it 245. So while 145 does seem pretty low on paper, with full world buffs, it's actually not that bad at all. And we'll talk about some pieces that you could possibly alternate towards more threat if the bosses end up hitting like pussies when they come out, or if the bosses end up hitting like chads when they come out. We'll talk about some pieces where you can opt for a little bit more shadow resistance, but this is going to be that big boy set for once you're actually in AQ40, getting all the big boy gear. Once again, as always, we have the Nemesis Skull Cap. This is a tried and true helmet. This is just what you're gonna use, period. It's got all the stats you want, and while it would be very, very nice to wear something like tier 2.5 helmet, or even Mission Dare, that's all going to depend on how hard the bosses hit. If the bosses end up hitting like pussies and you don't need the 10 shadow resistance, great. Slap on that tier 2.5 helmet, slap on that mission dare, whichever one you got, doesn't really matter. Both of them are about equally as good for this specific job. But if, they, if the bosses end up hitting really, really weak and you can drop this 10 shadow resistance, immediately swap this bad boy away for something better. Although something you're not going to want to swap away is this amulet. And this is the amulet that I was telling you about that is part of the Scepter quest chain for opening the Encourage Gates. And this is the amulet of Shadow Shielding. This is going to be the best amulet you can use for Twins tanking. So if you know that you're going to be the Warlock that's doing it for your guild every single week inside and out, maybe, hey, hey, maybe you guys, you could tell your guild, you know what? I'll take a hit, no problem guys. I'll be the designated shadow tank for the guild. If you give me a little bit more gear loot counseled to me, of course. You know, try to try to milk the guild for your services a little bit. Hmm? Anyways, if you are going to be that dedicated warlock, this is something worth picking up and getting that quest done. You're the quest is a pain. Yes, it's going to take you some time. But once you get it done, you're going to sit on this necklace and never replace it. It's just a great necklace to use for Twins tanking throughout Phase 5. Doomcaller's Mantle, the shoulders that we were talking about earlier, these are great shoulders. They add so much threat generation. The magical resistance, the magic penetration that these give you add plenty of threat. The hit chance is great and super, super important for Searing Pain spam. And the spell power, while Searing Pain has a little bit low spell power coefficient with 43% spell power coefficient. This is still going to add some 
damage and DPS, which is going to be the best slot that you can have, especially since the previous shoulders that we're using are tier 1, and the tier 1 shoulders were already quite mediocre. The next big item that we get is something off Fancris the Unyielding, which is a stamina that just flat out gives you a bunch of stamina and a bunch of shadow resistance, giving you 21 stamina, 20 shadow resistance. And you're trading this cloak out for either ZG cloak, or if you have full best in slot, it would be Cloak of the Devoured, which is 10 stamina, 10 intellect, 30 spell power, 1% hit. So you're losing 30 spell power and 1% hit, but gaining 20 shadow resistance. And remember that trade-off, because that's something that we're going to be talking about later. You're gaining 20 shadow resistance, losing 30 spell power, 1% hit. Next, we'll look at Garb of the Royal Ascension, and these are the trash robes that I was talking about earlier that drop off of the AQ40 trash mobs. These are adding 30 spell power, 2% hit rating, stamina, and 25 shadow resistance. And as we said before, 25 shadow resistance on, a, on just one item slot alone is a lot of shadow resistance. And on top of that, normally when you're gaining 25 shadow resistance, which is such a huge amount, the item ends up being crap. It ends up having terrible spell power or terrible stats on it overall. However, look at these stats, guys. Hit rating is very, very important when you're using spells that have low spell power coefficients. Because when you're evaluating your hit or crit conversions to spell power evaluation, you end up dividing by the coefficient. So the smaller the coefficient, the better hit rating is and the better crit rating is for that specific spell. So these robes are going to be some of the best robes that you can get. They just have fantastic stats on them for what you're trying to do here. Definitely, definitely a big item to get if you're the designated twin stank. Now, you'll notice here that I use Bracers of Arcane Accuracy instead of of Rock Fury Bracers. Now, can anyone can anyone tell me why I do this? I'll, I'll give you guys a second. Hold on, I'll give you a second. Does anyone does anyone get why? It's something we had just talked about earlier. The Bracers of Arcane Accuracy have less spell power than the Rock Fury Bracers. However, since our spell power coefficient on Searing Pain, which is going to be the primary spell that we're going to be using for this job, is very, very low. So that difference in spell power isn't that significant. However, these bracers give you intellect. And if you're going in there as a gnome, or if you're alliance and you have kings, or you're going in with world buffs, or you have ZG buff, that intellect is going to be significant, giving you a little bit extra crit for your Searing Pain spam. And I tend to prefer these over the Rock Fury Bracers, since Rock Fury Bracers don't have any intellect and are just slightly ahead in spell power, but Searing Pain has a terrible coefficient regardless. So I like these a little bit more. I'm going to use Nemesis Gloves here. You could swap these for Dark Storm Gauntlets, but this is a similar situation to the Nemesis Skull Cap. And by that, I mean, these only give 10 Shadow Resistance, which is good. And spell power and crit is good, but if you're compare, but if you're comparing them to the Dark Storm Gauntlets, the Dark Storm Gauntlets give you hit rating, which is about the same value as a crit rating in AQ gear, but it's adding a ton more spell power, so it's going to be a little bit better threat output. But that's vastly going to depend on how hard the bosses are hitting. And like I said before, as of the recording of this video, guys, as you guys surely know, AQ40 is not out yet, so we can't confirm or deny. So we can't quite confirm how hard the twins are going to be hitting at this time, especially because they didn't put AQ40 into the PTR, only AQ20. So time will tell. But it is important to notice that if you are using the tier 2 gloves, the tier 2 helm, and the tier 2 belt, you are gaining the three piece bonus. So not swapping these away for let's say tier 2.5 helmet or dark storm gauntlets instead isn't going to be that hurtful. While those items will give you more threat generation, it's not going to be that bad, and these will still give you shadow resistance, and that is why we use them. Next, we're gonna look at leggings of the Black Blizzard, and these are actually some new leggings that you get out of AQ20, and these drop off the last boss. These legs, while they don't add any shadow resistance, add a ton of spell power 
and crit, and on top of that, have a significant amount of intellect as well. Yes, these don't add any shadow resistance, but if you compare these to the legs that you would want to use for shadow resistance, such as the rune stygian leggings, the rune stygian leggings don't have any intellect on them, or spell power, or crit. So you're essentially trading 41 spell power, 1 crit, and 16 intellect, which is actually going to be more intellect with full world buffs, and especially if you're alliance, and you're trading that for plus 20 shadow resistance, and that's about it. So if you really, really need the shadow resistance, that's fine. However, this is going to be a good trade leaning heavier in favor of the TPS instead of the shadow resistance. Although an item that you might swap away for Rune Stygian, depending on how hard the bosses hit, is Doomcaller's Foot Wraps. Doomcaller's Foot Wraps are pretty good, don't get me wrong. They add stamina, they add int, they add spell power, and resistance is good. Resistance uh, and spell penetration is good. We always want spell penetration. However, compared to the other items that we could potentially swap for shadow resistance, such as swapping the legs for more shadow resistance, this is going to be something that we're going to want to swap first. Because compared to the legs, if you swap the legs to Rune Stygian legs, you're losing 41 spell power, 1% crit, and intellect. However, if you look at the boots and compare them to Rune Stygian boots, Rune Stygian boots also give plus 20 shadow resistance, just like the legs. But with the boots, you're only losing 28 spell power and 10 spell penetration and some intellect you're losing less than what you would lose if you swapped the legs so if you end up needing more shadow resistance than what you currently see in this setup one of the first items that you're looking to trade away in favor of more shadow resistance is going to be the doom caller's foot wraps in favor of the rune stygian boots uko's ring of darkness is a ring off of princess yua which is one of the bug trio bosses. And this is a pretty good ring for the trade-off that you get. We're trading this ring off for Ring of the Fallen God, which is 37 spell power and 1% hit rating. Now, 37 spell power and 1% hit rating for 20 shadow resistance. Remember that 20 shadow resistance, resistance trade-off, because we're just talking about the cloak as well. The cloak was a trade-off of 30 spell power and 1% hit rating. The ring is a trade-off of 37 spell power and 1% hit rating. So that makes the ring a worse trade-off than what the cloak is. So if when AQ40 comes out, the twin emperors end up hitting not that hard, before you end up trading away the tier 2 helmet, before you end up trading away the tier 2 gloves, you would want to trade away Uko's Ring of Darkness. Because Uko's Ring of Darkness is one of those items where, while it is a good item for shadow resistance, it's keeping you from a lot of potential threat gain and DPS. And alternatively, you could also just go for the Ruined Stygian Boots instead of the Doomcaller's Foot Wraps and just drop Uko's Ring of Darkness completely. Looking at the trinkets, these do look pretty standard, right? Now Therian's Tear is great. Ultra Flash Shadow Reflector is also great. Let's be honest. Both of these trinkets, super nice for what they're doing. However, I just want to run one more setup past you guys. One more option, just in case the bosses don't hit that hard. If we are able to cheese AQ40 and get away with the minimum amount of resistance we could possibly get away with, one of the alternative items that you could use instead of Ultra Flash Shadow Reflector, if it is safe to drop that resistance from Ultra, Sh Ultra Flash Shadow Reflector, is going to be Hazra's Charm of Destruction, the Warlock Class Trinket from ZG Mojo Madness. Hazra's Charm of Destruction adds 10% critical strike rating for 20 seconds on our destruction spells, which is incredible, because if you use this item right after the boss teleports to you, you're going to be able to add a ton of potential threat generation just from the use of this trinket. Now, 
It is important to note that you're dropping 20 shadow resistance, and 20 shadow resistance is no joke. So definitely, definitely, definitely get a good feel for how hard the bosses are hitting in AQ40 before you swap to this trinket. However, if the bosses don't hit that hard, and your healer team feels comfortable, and you're doing all of the different things that Warlocks can do to mitigate damage, by the way, we'll be talking about those strategies in another video coming up soon. We'll be talking about all the different things that you can do to min max on the twins tank fight we'll go over how to do the twins tank fight we'll cover absolutely everything on how to do the twin tank fight and we'll tell you how to min max as much as humanly possible but coming back to this video if the if the mobs don't hit that hard hazardous charm of destruction can be an awesome trinket to use before we close out this video, I just wanted to give a big shout out to all the people I've been coaching recently. It's been a ton of fun talking to you guys one on one, helping you get better, watching your parses improve every single week. I've really been enjoying it a lot and I know we've been having a ton of fun. So big shout out to you guys. And if any of you are interested in coaching, feel free to give me a private message on Discord. I should reply back within a couple days. And I do have some open time slots in the next few weeks if any of you guys are interested. And if you're not interested, that's totally fine too. But please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Really, really helps me out. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm and helps my YouTube channel grow. Do appreciate that, guys. Anyways, till next time, I'm out of here.